you. You don't have to wait on me. I'm going to be right there with you. You know, honey, listen, as Pastor Raymond has said, some people are sitting around waiting all day on Pentecost. Well, listen, it comes so many years ago, thousand years ago, Pentecost came about. And the power of the Holy Spirit swept across oh, an upper room and filled some folks up up there. And they were never the same. They began to preach and teach and let their light so shine that the world might see Jesus in them because they had seen Jesus. They had walked with Jesus. They had watched Jesus raise the dead. They had watched Jesus touch blinded eyes. They had watched the light of Jesus glow wherever He was. I want to tell you something today, folks. We as Christian people have got too used to the dark. We're living, we're living in a world and a land this day and time that is so filled with wickedness and trouble and strife, but we're walking and living too much in the dark when Jesus said, you need to come out of there and step into this beautiful light of God. All the light that shines before you will be a bright path for you to walk on from day to day. Well, we're going to be talking to you today a little bit, being a light for God. We all have a testimony. We all have a testimony or something we can do or or sometimes we are a light. Sometimes we are a light in a way we might not need to be. There was a police officer got a call and that police officer jumps into his squad car. And he calls the station, though, when he get to the, gets to the place, he says, y- y- y'all listen, I've got an interesting case here. He says, there's a woman that has shot her husband for stepping on her floor that she just mopped. The, the police station, the dispatcher, come back real quickly and he said, have you arrested her, asked the sergeant. No, not yet, the floor's still wet. She was a light, wasn't she? My goodness, she wanted that floor to shine. She didn't want nobody walking on her floor. But I want to talk to you about a testimony today that I believe each and every one of you will understand what we're talking about. Many times as, a, as believers, we, fall, we fail to realize that one of the greatest weapons we have against hell is our testimony. Your testimony makes you a threat to hell. So open your mouth and testify. Don't be ashamed of who you are. You're a child of God. You have, you, have, you have received an inheritance, if you will. And now, oh my goodness, no one has anything on you. You've got, you, you, your father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You've got God and He's on your side. And you can be what you want to be with God. God will guide you, deliver you, help you, and, and make you to be what He'd love for you to be if you will let Him. Let's run to Joshua and let's look and see what the fourth chapter says. Several verses here, but I want to run through this because I think you need to get to Jesus of it. Now the scripture says, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua. Now Joshua is leading these children here and, and they got to the Jordan River and the Jordan River was up and it was a mess so they couldn't get across. It was several and they was getting ready to go into battle. So he said, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe. He said, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan from right where the priest stood and to carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. Now, how are you going to do that, Ronnie? You just said that the Jordan River is, is all rolling and it's, it's done up and it's a mess. You can't get across it. What are we going to do? Well, realize the Jordan River has stopped. Are you hearing me today? It absolutely God hand was upon it and just stopped it where the priest could step right out into it. My first thought was when I first read this sometime, I read it and I thought, wait a minute, how'd they pick up stones in the middle of the Jordan River? I didn't didn't read through. I just stopped, you know, and I'm trying to ask myself questions as I go. But But there they were. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe. And asked to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites. 
to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them. Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was stopped. It was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, it stopped and let that cross. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites. As the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp where they put them down. Joshua set up uh, the twelve stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. I want to see those, Bob. When I go back to, to Israel, I want to go there. I want to see those stones. Now the priest... Let's go to the 10th verse. The priest who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people. Just as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. And as soon as all of them had crossed the ark of the Lord and the priest came to the other side also while the people watched. The men of Reuben, Gad, and the, the half tribe of uh, Manasseh uh, crossed over, armed in front of the Israelites as Moses has directed them. About 40,000 armed for battle crossed over before the Lord to the plains of Jericho for war. That day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they, oh, they, they revered him all the days of his life, just as they had uh, revered Moses. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priest carrying the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priest that was standing right in the middle, Come up out of the Jordan. And the priest came up out of the river carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord. No sooner, no sooner had they set their feet on the dry ground than the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future when your descendants ask their fathers, What do these stones mean? Tell them Israel has crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over then the Lord your God did to the Jordan just what He had done to the Red Sea when He dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Father, add your blessings to the reading of this word in Jesus' name. Amen. We find here that Joshua had chose 12 men out of the 12 tribes of Israel and commanded them to take every man a stone. These stones, as we've just read, were to become pillars of testimony to the miracle power of God dividing that Jordan and delivering the children of Israel. It was required that every man would take up a stone upon his shoulders. In other words, every man had to carry his own testimony. Hang on to that. Now let's look at Revelations 12 and 11. Revelation 12 and 11 says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Well, we, we don't ever think, though, that your testimony isn't important. According to the word of God, you are made an overcomer. Hear me now. 
You're made an overcomer by the blood of Jesus and by your light that shines. Your testimony, if you will. Are you a light for Jesus? That's, that's your testimony. Romans 8 and 37 gives us a good word. It says, no, in all these things, we, we, we are more than what? We're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Conquerors was a great... They were, man, great warriors of God. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Who is Him? It's Jesus. He loves you that much. He wants you to be more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror. He says you can do all things if you'll put your trust in Him. More than conquerors. More because I didn't just get delivered. I didn't just get healed. I didn't just make it through the Jordan waters. I didn't just make it through the fire and through the flood. But I've got a testimony. I'm a light for God. You see, it's not just what you came through and what you made it through that makes you a threat to the hell itself. It's that you came through. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't leave you there. You walked through it, David said. David said, I don't want to stay in this valley. I want to come out. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to fear no evil because guess what? I know who's with me and He is with you. In other words, your personal victory benefits no one except yourself. But when you open your mouth and declare the faithfulness of God and declare the mercy of God that delivered you, that restored you and set you free, your testimony becomes, yes, a weapon. Your testimony, your light becomes a sword in your hand. Your testimony becomes an instrument of power to set captive free. Your testimony becomes a lifeline to someone who is sinking. Many of God's people have been shamed into high their light or their testimony. Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us, it says, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. Oh my goodness, the enemy wants to keep your mouth shut because you see, he knows your light. He knows that testimony that you have has the power to bring life to yourself and to others to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace, and to bring restoration and deliverance. It's a light, none other than any other light. Hobie Halfway Market, when you walk in there, buddy, you walk in there with the light. You see, you've got to walk in with the light. And you might be talking about, you might be talking about a tree. You might be talking about a cow. You might be talking about the sausage and biscuit that you're eating. But the, before, before you know it, somehow or another, somebody's going to open a door that the light will be able to shine. And Jesus comes out. And He is uplifted. And He's praised. What a great God we serve. Aren't you glad for Him today? Oh, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, but I didn't die. I walked through the fiery furnace, but I didn't burn up. I waded through the deep waters, but I didn't drown. Is there anybody else who has a testimony or a light here today? You shouldn't have survived that drug overdose, but you did. You lost your house. You may have lost your car. You may have lost your money. You should have lost your mind, but you didn't. Others have went through a lot less and didn't make it, and they're locked up in an institution today. But come on, somebody. Am I talking to anybody here today? You shouldn't have gotten that position on the job. Others are a lot more qualified than you. You shouldn't be living in the kind of house or, or you're living and driving the kind of car you're driving. Oh, but wait a minute, Martha. Oh, but God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Martha got to that verse right there and she couldn't go any farther. And for about a month, she'd just look at you and say, Oh, but God. But God. Oh, but God. But God. But God. Listen, I should be dead. But God. But God has healed me. But God's delivered me. He's promoted and protected me. But God has anointed me. He Has anybody got a testimony? Has God uh, poured out His but God on you? The Hebrew children had a great miracle when God delivered them through the fiery furnace. 
Oh, but the most valuable thing that they received that day was not the miracle. It was the testimony. We're still talking about it today. Ha, ah, goodness. Isn't that good stuff? The light of God continues to shine. But their testimony is still bringing hope to the hopeless. And it's still bringing strength to the weak and healing to the sick and deliverance to the bound and oppressed. We overcome today by what? By the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and by the word of our testimony. Somebody, somebody wants to be delivered today oh, because of your testimony. Somebody may be delivered today because of the light that you shine before them, because of your actions you take before them. Somebody needs just some love from you or a touch from you today. Somebody's going to be delivered because of your testimony. Well, somebody's also going to be healed because of your light and your prayer for them. And somebody's going to receive boldness and strength and try again because of your testimony. Somebody who was on the verge of a nervous breakdown is going to find there's a peace that passes all understanding and comfort and strength because of your light. Because, oh, somebody who was ready to quit on life it's going to keep on living because of your testimony. When David was running from Saul, he went and got the sword of Goliath that he took from him when he cut off his head. The sword of Goliath represents two things. One, in the hand of Goliath, it represents uh, that which was sent to kill, steal, and destroy. We could call it sickness and disease, or we could call it debt, marriage problems. We could call it a tax on your character. But in David's hand, it's the testimony. Oh, my goodness, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Say it with me. No weapon against you will prosper. Glory to God. Oh, folks, it's the testimony that if God be for you, who can be against you? God will give you a testimony. You need to know that there is, you need to know that there's a testimony in you. No miracle, though, without a problem. There's no victory without a battle and no crown without a cross. No resurrection without a death. No testimony without a test. Paul and Silas, we realize they were beaten, they were humiliated publicly, and they were bound and cast into the inner prison. They could have murmured and complained and said, Doggone it, we've done everything we could do. I thought God was right here with us. We've prayed, we've trusted God, we've done this, they've done that. They didn't murmur, they didn't complain. They could have been angry and bitter, or they could have slipped over into that self-pity, but they didn't. The Bible says, though, at midnight, at some time around midnight, the darkest part of the night, Paul and Silas began to pray. Oh, they began to open the doors of heaven, the key that unlocks the door. They began to pray because that's the ability they had and we all have today. They began to pray and seek God. And then they didn't just pray. They didn't call for the preacher to come in and sing, a uh, preacher to come in and preach a message, Ken. They called for the song leader. They said, come on, y'all, help us sing this song. They began to pray. They began to sing. That's why it's important that, that, that when we sing, we should sing. Whatever that song may be, it may not be your most favorite song. It may be too slow or it may be too fast or too loud or too soft. But I want to say what you do when you come here, you praise. You seek God in the words of the song and you praise if nobody else does. You better look out because chains are going to fall and the doors and the, the building will shake as it did in this point in time. Because it says at midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises to God. And God shook that prison off of its foundation and shook the doors off of their hinges, if you will, and broke the shackles off of every prisoner. Can you just imagine what in the world is happening? I just stopped to tell you something today. God works, I've said this before, God works the night shift. Did you know that? In fact, He does His best work in the dark because His darkness cannot take the light. 
Light, light will overcome the darkness. You may not see it, but He's working. You may not feel it, but He is working. I'm just wondering, is anybody here who has a thank God I made it testimony? I they thank God I made it praise. I'm just wondering, has anybody here ever been through a storm? And it looked like and sounded like and felt like you weren't going to make it. But God came on the scene and made a way out of no way. And God rebuked that storm. And He brought me out of the deep, miry clay. He set my feet upon a solid rock to stay. I'm so glad for God. Oh, my goodness. But God, but God came on the scene and made a way out of no way. Well, David said in Psalms 40 and verse 3, he said this, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Because you see, he's put a new song into my mouth. David loved God. He was after God's own heart. David said, I was stuck in a horrible pit and I was sinking deep in sin, in the miry clay. All joy and all peace was fading from view. I was sinking so deep in sin. I was far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply I was stained within. I was seeking to rise no more. Oh, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe, safe am I. Because you see, love reached down and lifted this old boy up. Aren't you glad to know of that love? Oh, David loved God, but God, oh my goodness, reached down and pulled me out, set my feet on that rock, gave me back my joy, back my peace, gave me back my song. David was saying, uh, what David was saying is God has give, given me a testimony and when people hear my testimony, they will honor God and put their trust in Him for their own deliverance and their own miracles. Oh, does anybody have a testimony? Anybody have a midnight praise? Oh, does anybody have a thank God I made it praise? Anybody know how to give God your praise? You see, your God, our God, <laughs> your good God. You see, our God is greater. He's greater than divorce, y'all. Your God is greater than cancer. He's greater than heart trouble. Your God is greater than diabetes or high blood pressure. Your God is greater than arthritis and deafness and, and cataracts. Come on, somebody. Your God is greater than drug addiction. It's greater than homosexuality, than perversion. Somebody needs to lift your hands today and your voices and begin to praise God like He deserves the praise. Praise Him like He brought you out of something. Begin to praise God like you're thankful. I want you to realize we can test and say, I was sick, but God healed me. I was lost, but God found me. I was bound by drugs and alcohol, but God delivered me. I was pressed by a spirit of fear, but God has set me free. I was sinking in debt, but God gave me a miracle. I was about to lose my marriage, but God brought restoration. I was about to lose my mind, but God stepped in and spoke peace. Because you see, a power from a testimony from somebody stepped forward and stepped up and was a light before me that gave me hope that said, Yes, Ronnie. You are better than this. Yes, Ronnie, you can come through this. Nothing needs to keep you or hinder you from being the very best you can be for the beautiful light of God. God loves you. He loves you with all your heart. Listen today. I'm closing. But listen, if you're here today and you don't know for sure, if you've not said Jesus, I want you to live in my heart. If you've not said that, I... I look around and I think most of you in here have probably said that. But I want to say, if you hadn't made that confession to God, oh my goodness, do not leave here today without 
making that confession and saying, Lord, I want you to live in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart right here. Oh, my goodness, whatever you may have today, whatever you may have today, I want you to give it to God. You're, you're walking into the end of 2017. This service, uh, the next time we have service here, it'll be a totally new year. We'll never see this year again. But I want to say to you, you can let this year be behind and step into 18 and know that God has made a way in you. Has He blessed you? You know what? I want you to stand with me. And as always, I always want to give an invitation.